Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss if is your A level maths course code is 9709. We are going to discuss paper 1, variant 1 of May June 2022. So let's start. First question Express x square minus 8x plus 11 in the form of x plus p whole square plus q, where p and q are constant. Now there are two methods either you can go with the completing square or you can comparing coefficients so i prefer comparing coefficients because it's easy to solve it so we have x square minus 8x plus 11 and we need to write the expression in the form of x plus p whole square so if i apply the identity here it will be a square plus 2ab plus b square and plus q I can remove the brackets here so now it will be like this right after that we need to start comparing coefficients we need to compare the coefficient of x square the coefficient of x and the coefficient of x power 0 which is a constant value a value without x so if we compare the coefficient of x so both sides the coefficient of x is 1 right so we can say that the coefficient of x square it's 1 equals to 1 similarly if we compare the coefficient of x so here the coefficient of x is minus 8 and here we have plus 2p right so i can write minus 8 is equals to 2 times p and you will get the value of p it's negative 4 lastly we can compare the constant that is plus 11 and p square plus q a constant value is a value without x so we can write that 11 is equals to p square plus q we have the value of p like the value of p here so that will be 11 equals to 16 plus q and you got the value of q that is equals to negative 5 right now we have the value of p and q we need to place them in the final equation the question says the equation x plus p whole square plus q if we place the value of p it is negative 4 whole square and q is negative 5 that is your first part answer after that it says that hence find the exact solution of the equation x square minus 8x plus 11 that is the same equation given in the first part so i can write the expression we have derived in the first part it will be x minus 4 whole square minus 5 equals to 1 if you place the value of minus 5 on the right side it will be a plus 5 which makes it 6 uh, we can apply under root on both sides so it will be equals to x minus 4 is equals to plus minus under root 6 the question highlighted an important keyword here that we need to find the exact solution that means we need to leave our answer in the form of search so it will be x minus 4 is equals to plus under root 6 and x minus 4 is equals to minus under root 6 so you will get x is equals to under root 6 plus 4 and you will get x is equals to 4 minus under root 6 these are the two possible values for x moving towards the next question from the topic arithmetic and ge geometric progression series the 13th term of an arithmetic progression is 12 and the sum of the first 30 terms is minus 15 find the sum of the first 50 term of the progression the 13th term of an arithmetic progression is 12 firstly i will use this data and write down the equation 13th term so t 13th is equals to 12 and the sum of the first 30 terms then the second statement sum of the first 30 terms is minus 15 all right so if we apply the working formula for term the working formula for term is equals to a plus n minus 1 times d that is the term formula right so if we are talking about 13th term it is equals to a plus 13 minus 1 12 d so i can place that working formula for 13th term over here right 13th term is equals to 12 and i got the first equation here similarly I will apply the working formula for sum Sn is equals to n over 2 2a plus n minus 1d and the value for the first 30 terms so I got S30 is equals to 
30 divided by 2 times 2a plus 30 minus 129d and the sum value is given it's negative 15. So negative 15 equals to 30 divided by 2 times 2a plus 29d. If I multiply it will be minus 30 is equals to 30 2a plus 29d. We can simplify both of the 30s. So minus 1 equals to 2a plus 29d. Alright, we got the equation for sum and I am going to use that equation here. That is the equation for this condition. If I arrange it a little bit, so I will get 2a plus 29d is equals to negative 1. So that is my second equation. Alright, now we got two equations and we got two unknowns. That means we need to apply the simultaneous method. So I am going to multiply this equation by 2. So if it multiplied by 2, you will get 2a plus 24d is equals to 24. And the second equation remain as it is, which is 2a plus 29d equals to minus 1. Now I will change all of the signs here. So it will be minus, minus and plus and solve them simultaneously. So 2a and 2a cancels, 24 minus 29, it will be minus 5d and 24 plus 1 it's 25 so you got the value for d it is equals to negative 5 once we have the value of d we can easily find out the value of a by using equation number one equation number one is a plus 12 d is equals to 12 we need to plug the value for d here so d is negative 5 and i'm going to use that value so that will be a plus 12 minus 5 equals to 12 a minus 60 is equals to 12 a is equals to 72 now we can apply the working formula for s50 so the working formula for s50 is equals to 50 divided by 2 2 a plus 50 minus 1 49 times d <clears throat> the value for a is 72 and the value for d is negative 5 we need to simplify the so 2 times 25 it's 15 2 twos are 4 2 sevens are 14 uh, minus 49 times 5 uh, it will be 49 into 5 245 245 all right plus 144 times 25 so the answer is minus 2 5 2 5 that is the sum of the 50 terms and that is your answer. Alright, this part done. Question number 3. The coefficient of x4 in the expansion of 2x square plus k square over x power 5 is a. The coefficient of x square in the expansion of 2kx minus 1 to the power 4 is b. Find a and b in terms of the constant k. Alright. So at first we need to uh, recall that expansion working formula a plus b power n equals to a power n plus n combination 1 a to the power n minus 1 b to the power 1 plus n combination 2 a to the power n minus 2 b power 2 and so on all right so the first term we have a is 2x square plus k square over x to the power n is 5 is equals to a power n that means 2x square to the power 5 plus n combination 1, 5 combination 1, a to the power n minus 1, 4 and b to the power 1 plus n combination 2, so 5 combination 2, a to the power n minus 2 and b to the power 2. Now I am going to place the value for a and b. a is 2x square, so a is 2x square and b is k square over x k square over x right at first we need to find out that term which is a coefficient of x power 4 so if you multiply power and power it will be 2 5s are 10 so that term won't be a coefficient of x4 so this term is not for our use after that x power 8 and x power 1 so that will be x power 7 this term is not for our use after that 
x power 6 and x power 2. So 6 minus 2, 4. So that is our term which we are looking for. So the term we need to simplify further is 5 combination 2, 2 cube. I am solving this term, right? 2 cube is at 8 x power 2, 3 is 6 times k. 2 square is 4, 2 2 are 4 and x power 2. Alright. So if you simplify, if you simplify both x here, so with the rule of indices when bases are same and they are dividing power needs to be subtracted. So 5 combination 2 it's 10. So you will get 10 times 8x 4k square. And if you simplify it further you will get 80k square x4. So we got the term of coefficient of x4. Similarly we need to do the same for this bracket here. Now this bracket is 2kx minus 1 to the power 4 and we are looking for x square. That will be the second term alright. So it will be first term a power n so it's 2kx power 1 plus n combination 1 is 4 combination 1 2kx times 1 so 4 minus 1 it will be q plus 4 combination 2 2kx power 2 alright now we are looking for x power 2 the coefficient of x square and we got the coefficient of x square here that means the first two terms are not for our use so I am going to cut them because we are looking for only x square so I am going to further simplify the term 4 combination 2 times 2 square is 4k square and x square we can find out the value for 4 combination 2 4 combination 2 it's 6 so you will get 6 4s are 24 k square x square so the coefficient of x square is 24 k square and the coefficient of x4 is 80 k square alright it says that the coefficient of x4 is a that means value for a is 80 k square value for a is equals to 80 k square and value for b is 24 k square wait that will be x k to the power 2 2 are 4 yes that will be k to the power 4 here all right so that will be k to the power 4 i forgot to multiply powers here that's why we are getting 4 all right so it's 80k4 for A and for B it's 24k square. You got the value for A and B. After that part. Given that A plus B is equals to 2, 1, 6 find the possible value of A. So the value for A is 80k4. We got 80k4 for A plus the value for B is 24k square. 24k square is equals to 216. We need to simplify it. Now that will be an uh, uh, disguised quadratic equation. Firstly, we need to arrange it 80k4 plus 24k square minus 216 equals to 0. Alright. Now we can use our calculator to find out the value of k here. We got the values for k square after solving k square equals to 1.5 and uh, other value is k square is equals to minus 1.8. So we need to apply a root on both sides to find the value of k. So this one can be solved out it will be plus minus 1 upon 5 means 3 upon 2 and we cannot solve this one because we cannot solve the negative numbers in under root sign. The final answer for this question will be plus minus root 3 divided by 2. That will be your answer. Alright, it's question number 6. Prove the identity sin cube theta over sin theta minus 1 minus sin square theta over 1 plus sin theta equals to minus 10 square theta. Alright. Firstly, I will start with the LCM part. So we need to take the LCM and LCM will be sin theta minus 1 and sin theta plus 1 it's 1 plus sin theta or sin theta plus 1 they are same so sin cube theta multiplies with 1 plus sin theta minus 
साइन स्क्वायर थीटा मल्टीप्लाइज विद साइन थीटा माइनस वन ऑल राइट आई विल मल्टीप्लाई द ब्रैकेट्स इन द न्यूमिनेटर सो दैट विल बी साइन क्यूब थीटा प्लस साइन फोर थीटा माइनस साइन क्यूब थीटा माइनस माइनस प्लस वन इन द डिनोमिनेटर वी हैव एन आइडेंटिटी ऑफ ए माइनस बी ए प्लस बी दैट विल बी ए स्क्वायर माइनस बी स्क्वायर इन द न्यूमिनेटर साइन क्यूब थीटा एंड साइन क्यूब थीटा कैंसल्स सो वी हैव साइन फोर थीटा प्लस वन डिवाइडेड बाय नाउ साइन स्क्वायर थीटा माइनस वन वी नो द आइडेंटिटी साइन स्क्वायर थीटा प्लस कॉस स्क्वायर थीटा इज इक्वल टू वन If I shift plus one on the left side, it will be minus one, and cos square theta it will be minus cos square theta. That's mean sine square theta minus one it is equals to minus cos square theta. Further, when we multiply sine square theta minus one, it will be plus sine square theta. Mistakenly, I've written here plus one. It will be sine square theta. Here it will be sine square theta as well, right? Now from the numerator we can take common sine square theta. So if we take common sine square theta inside the bracket, it will be sine square theta plus one divided by minus cos square theta. We know the identity that sine over cos it is equals to ten. So that. Is equals to minus ten square theta times sine square theta plus one, and that is the answer we need to show. All right, next one, part B. The first word is a keyword. Hence, that means we need to use the answer from the previous part. Hence, solve the equation. Now, this part of the equation we have already proved that it is equals to. Minus ten square theta sine square theta plus one. So instead of this complete equation, I will write what we had shown in the previous part: minus ten square theta sine square theta plus one bracket sine square theta plus one is equals to. On my right side, we have ten square theta times one minus sine square theta. When you multiply the brackets, it will be minus ten square theta sine square theta minus ten square theta equals to ten square theta minus ten square theta sine square theta. Ten square theta sine square theta. Ten square theta sine square theta. They both cancels, right? Now I will. What I will do. On my right side, we have ten square theta. When this ten square theta shifts on the right side, it will be a plus ten square theta. And on my left side, it will be zero. Ten square, ten square. It's two ten square theta equals to zero. Ten square theta is sine square theta over cos square theta. And you shift cos square, it will be zero is equals to two. साइन स्क्वायर थीटा साइन स्क्वायर थीटा इक्वल्स टू जीरो एंड साइन थीटा इक्वल्स टू जीरो ना एट विच वैल्यू वी गॉट द वैल्यूज फॉर थीटा साइन थीटा इज जीरो सो वी नो दैट वेन थीटा इज जीरो साइन इज जीरो वेन थीटा इज पाए साइन इज जीरो एंड वेन थीटा इज टू पाए साइन इज जीरो एंड फाइनली For final answer, since the domain is from zero to two pi, both are not included. So we have only one value for theta, and that value will be only pi. So that is the final answer of your question. It's question number five. Diagram shows the sector ABC of a circle with center A and radius R. The line BD is perpendicular to AC. Angle CAB is theta. Radians given that theta is one over six pi. Find the exact area of BCD in terms of R. All right. So we need to find the area of BCD only, and the working strategy for this part is: at first we need to find the area of a sector, and then we need to find the area of a triangle, 
and when we subtract these two areas we will get the area of the required region that is our working strategy so firstly i will find out the area of sector so area of sector the working formula is 1 upon 2 r square theta r square theta so r square is r and theta is what theta is 1 over 6 pi so if we simplify it we will get pi r square divided by 12 that is the area of a sector right similarly i need to find out the area of a triangle so area of a triangle is 1 over 2 base multiply by height so we don't have the value of the base here right but we have theta and we can find out the value of base in terms of r so if i construct the triangle a d b separately it will be like this a d and b right that is the triangle a d b it's 90 degree here and the hypotenuse is r and theta is 1 over 6 pi that is pi over 6 so we need to find the value of ad and bd we can just find out the value of ad here so let's suppose if i'm going to find the value of ad applying trigonometry so that will be hypotenuse that will be opposite and it's adjacent so adjacent over hypotenuse we need to apply cos here so cos pi over 6 is equals to adjacent is x and hypotenuse is r so we got x is equals to cos pi over 6 first i need to find the value of cos pi over 6 is equals to root 3 over 2 so x is equals to root 3 over 2 times r all right to find the area of a triangle i will apply the different formula which says that half a b sin c half a b sin c all right and now it will be 1 upon 2 a is what the length of ad which is under root 3 divided by 2 r b is what r and sine c c is pi over 6 right when we have two sides and the included angle we can find the area of a triangle by using this working formula so i'm going to rub this one because i didn't use this area of a triangle now we need to simplify the area of a triangle so it will be uh, 1 root 3 divided by 4 r square and sine pi over 6 now pi over 6 is 30 and sine 30 is 1 upon 2 all right so finally we got root 3 r square divided by 4 2 are 8 that is the area of our triangle now to find the area of the shaded part all you need is just to subtract these two areas so area of shaded part not shaded in fact it says area of bcd sorry area of bcd is equals to area of sector so area of a sector we got its pi r square divided by 12 minus area of a triangle under root 3 r square divided by 8 all right we need to simplify it uh, find the exact area so exact area is we can leave in the same form there is no need to simplify it further that is your answer because it says exact area we cannot simplify pi or root 3 here so that is your first part answer in part b it says that given that the length of bd is root 3 over 2 r find the exact perimeter of bcd in terms of r at first let me just paste that figure from the first part all right it is given that the length of BD is under root 3 over 2 R root 3 over 2 R so we need to find out the perimeter and for perimeter we need to find out the length of BD that is already given we must have the value of DC and the length of BC as well all right so firstly I will find out the value of theta here because theta will be separate as the length of BD changes so we are going to apply sine theta here so sine theta is equals to opposite is what root 3 over 2 r divided by r so r and r cancel so th theta equals to sine inverse of under root 3 divided by 2 the angle for this part is pi over 3 radian all right that is 60 degree once you have the value for theta you can find out the arc length that is the length of bc 
So for the length of BC, we can apply working formula S is equals to R theta. R is R and the value of theta is pi over 3. So we got pi R over 3 for the length of B and C. And now we need to find the length of CD. To find the length of CD, before that we need to find the length of AD. And to find the length of AD, we can apply uh, 10 or either cos. So I'm going with cos here. So cos theta is equals to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Cos theta. Theta we had is pi over 3 is equals to AD is unknown and R as it is, right? So we need to find the value of cos pi over 3. Cos pi cos pi over 3. That is equals to 1 upon 2. So 1 upon 2 R when you shift on the left side it will be multiply equals to AD. So we got the value for AD and to find the value of D and C now remember that from A to C from A to C we have a radius that is R because of both of the lengths are equal because of radius right and to find the length of DC to find the length of DC all I need is R minus 1 upon 2 R so that will be 1 upon 2 R that is the length of DC now for the perimeter part all you need is to add the values for DC a B D and B C. I'm going to add these values. So value for B D is given that it's root 3 divided by 2 R plus value of D C is 1 upon 2 R plus value of uh, B C. B C is what? Pi R upon 3. That will be the perimeter. The question it says that find the exact perimeter so there is no need to simplify it further. And that is our answer for the perimeter. Next one. The function f is defined as follows. f of x is x square minus 4 divided by x square plus 4. For x is greater than 2, find an expression for f inverse of x. So at first we are going to start the steps to find inverse. That is in place y instead of fx. So you got the equation y is equals to x square minus 4 divided by x square plus 4 uh, cross multiply so y times x square plus 4 equals to x square minus 4 expand the bracket x square y plus 4y is equals to x square minus 4 I will gather all the x square on the left side it will be x square y minus x square equals to minus 4 minus 4y x square will be common it will be y minus 1 equals to minus 4 uh, taking common and it will be 1 by 1 plus y right minus plus minus yes and after that x square equals to minus 4 1 plus y divided by y minus 1 all right friends we need to find the uh, we need to find x here right so we need to apply under root on both sides so apply root on both sides so that will be equals to x is equals to minus 4 1 plus y divided by y minus 1 with the root sign to remove the sign of negative here what we can do we can multiply the whole fraction with the negative sign it will be 4 1 plus y divided by 1 plus y 1 minus y right what I did I just changed the sign of both numerator and denominator right so if you change the sign plus y it will be negative y and minus 1 it will be a positive one and the last step is replace x with uh, f inverse of x and replace y with x so it will be 4 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x and that is your answer for f inverse of x all right it's first part answer next one show that 1 minus 8 divided by x square plus 4 can be expressed as x square minus 4 over x square plus 4 and hence state the range of f 
We have the expression 1 minus 8 divided by x square plus 4. If we take out the LCM here, LCM is x square plus 4. It will be x square plus 4 minus 8. Simplify, you will get x square minus 4 divided by x square plus 4. That is the expression we need to show. So we had done this part. And after that it says state the range of f. Now we need to find out the range of this function. But first let me see the domain. So domain here is x is greater than 2. Let me write down the domain here x is greater than 2. If you plug in the value 2 here. Right if I plug in the value 2 here. So at x is equals to 2. It will be 2 square 4 minus 4 divided by 4 plus 4. And you will get 0. Right. So the smallest value of f of x it can be greater than equals to 0 greater than 0 all right why greater than why not greater than because domain is only greater than there is no equal to sign and it should be less than now since since we are dealing with the uh, reciprocal function right x square in the denominator as well now you need to observe that if I you know if I just increase the value of x let's suppose x is 5 let's suppose so denominator will be what 25 minus 4 21 and num uh, uh, numerator 21 and denominator will be 29 so the denominator will always increase because it's positive here right denominator will always increase so denominator increasing and numerator decreasing so the function range cannot exceed 1 here all right it's always lesser than 1 and why I just told you the reason the denominator part will always be greater as compared to numerator part you can take one more value for x for this concept let's suppose let's suppose x is 9 right so in the numerator it will be 81 minus 4 and denominator it will be 81 plus 4 so 81 minus 4 77 81 plus 4 is 85 it is always lesser than 1 so for all values of x you cannot exceed the value 1 that's why the range is from 0 to 1 and that is your answer for this part explain why the composite function f of f cannot be formed so if we observe the concept of f of f of x that means that the main function is f and we need to place f of x instead of x right but the question is about one mark so it talks about the reason so we must know that what reason is here now <clears throat> listen closely that if you have f of f of x right f of f of x the domain the range of this function the range of this function acts as a domain of this function f example let's suppose if i'm writing that f of g of x right so the range of g of x will be the domain of f of x that is the question right now in previous part we had find out the range of f of x is from 0 to 1 right that is the range of f of x and the question says that the domain of x should be greater than 2 the domain of f should be greater than 2 so we can say that f of f can not be formed and you need to state the reason here because because range of f does not include the whole domain of f that is the reason because now listen let's suppose that it's a function right and this function gives value to this one now this function can provide value only from 0 to 1 right and this function accept the value if it's greater than 2 that is why it is not possible to have a composite function of f of f of x next one
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन डायग्राम शोज द कर्व विद इक्वेशन वाई इक्वल्स टू थ्री एक्स माइनस टू पावर वन अपॉन टू एंड द लाइन वाई इक्वल्स टू वन ओवर टू एक्स प्लस वन द कर्व एंड द लाइन इंटरसेक्ट्स एट पॉइंट ए एंड बी फाइंड द कॉर्डिनेट्स ऑफ ए एंड बी सो इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी नीड टू सॉल्व विद द सैमटेनियस इक्वेशन सो वी हैव वाई इज इक्वल्स टू थ्री एक्स माइनस टू टू द पावर वन अपॉन टू एंड वी हैव वाई इज इक्वल्स टू वन ओवर टू टाइम्स एक्स प्लस वन on both sides we have y and y so we can equate both of the equations so it will be 3x minus 2 with the power 1 upon 2 is equals to 1 over 2x plus 1 on the right side i can take lcm here so it will be x plus 1 over sorry x plus 2 over 2 is equals to 3x minus 2 to the power 1 over 2 now i need to remove that under root sign so i need to apply Square on both sides. All right. So if we apply a square on both sides on the left side, the square and root they cancel each other. So we have three x minus two on the left side. On the right side, in the denominator, it will be two square four. In the numerator, it will be an algebraic identity a square plus two ab plus b square. Cross multiply. Twelve x minus eight is equals to x square plus 4x plus 4. Taking all the terms on the right side, x square plus 4 minus 12. It will be minus 8x plus 4 plus 8. It's plus 12 equals to 0. We can do middle term here. It will be x square minus 6x minus 2x plus 12. Taking common x, it will be x minus 6 minus 2x minus 6. Taking common, it's x minus six. Leftover part is x minus two equal to zero, and we got two values for x, x minus six, x minus two equal to zero. So we got x equals to six and x is equals to two. All right. Once we have the value for x, now we need to find out the value for y here. So we can take any equation. So I will pick y equals to x plus two divided by two. I had picked this equation after taking LCM. So add x is equals to six. So y is equals to six plus two divided by two, eight divided by two, four. So I got the first coordinate that when x is six, y is four. Similarly, I will do the same for second coordinate. Y equals to x plus two divided by two, and this time add x is equals to two. So y equals to two plus two, four divided by two equals to two. And I got the second coordinate that when x is two, y is two. So I will label the first one as a and the second one as b. Moving towards the next part. Hence, find the area of the region enclosed between the curve and the line. So we need to find out the area of that curve. Before that, I just need to uh, let's say copy the diagram. Wait a minute. All right. It will be easy for us to simplify it now. Wait a minute. Yes. All right. So we got the diagram here. All right. Now it says we need to find the area of the region. So the strategy, the working strategy is if I draw the line here from A and B. All right. We need to find the area of the shaded portion. So first, I will find the area under A and B. That complete area I will find by using integration. And in that integration, we have the limits. We have the points for A and B. They will be treated as limits here. All right. So first, I will find the area, the highlighted area here, and the value for A x coordinate is two and six. So it's two and six. All right. So A is two. Let me uh, write down the coordinate symbol here. So that will be B and that will be A because B x value is greater than uh, A x value. Now we have the equation of the curve. Uh, it is y is equals to three x minus two to the power one upon two, and we need to start integrating it. All right. Now the integral of 3x minus 2 power 1 upon 2 it will be 3x minus 2 divided by 3. 
we need to add 1 in the power. So 1 upon 2 plus 1 it's 3 upon 2 and divided by whole power 3 upon 2 and we need to introduce the constant here. No, no constant because we have limits here, right? The limits are from 2 to 6. So we need to apply limits here from 2 to 6, alright? So that will be 2 over 3, 3 are 9 times 3x minus 2 power 3 upon 2 and limits are 2 and 6. Now we need to apply the limits here. So it will be 2 over 9 as it is. I am just starting with the upper limit. Upper is 8. So I am going to place 6 instead, uh, 6 instead of x. So 3, 6 minus 2 and whole power 3 upon 2 upper limit minus lower limit. 3, 2 minus 2 and power is 3 upon 2. Alright. After that simplify it. It will be 2 over 9. 3, 6 are 18. 18 minus 2, 16. 16 to the power 3 upon 2 minus 3, 2 are 6. 6 minus 2, 4. 4 to the power 3 upon 2. 16 to the power 3 upon 2, it will be 64 minus 8 and whole divided by 2 upon 9. 64 minus 8, it will be 56. Uh, 64 minus 8 and multiply by 2 and divided by 9. So that will be 12.44. 12.44 is that area which is highlighted in yellow region. Alright, now I will find the area of that portion, area of that trapezium here, right? This is a trapezium. So now I will start working of area of a trapezium. The working formula is 1 upon 2 sum of parallel sides into height. To find the area, I will first write down the coordinates 2, 2 and 6, 4. So the coordinate for A is 2, comma 2. That means this value for Y is 2. And it is 6, comma 4. That means this value of Y is 4, right? All right. So it means that this length, this length here it's 2 and this length here it's 4. So the working formula for trapezium it will be 1 upon 2 sum of parallel sides it's 2 plus 4 and height. Height is this distance. So that length it will be 4. Simplify. So it will be 2 1s are 2 2s are 4 plus 2 6 2s are 12. That is the area of the trapezium. Now to find the area of the shaded region, what I will do, I will subtract the area of a trapezium from that total area. So I will left it left over with the area of the shaded part, right? So area of shaded part is equals to 12.44 minus 12. That will be 0 0.44. That will be the area of the shaded portion. All right. Next one. The curve y equals to sin x is transformed to the curve y equals to 4 sin half x minus 13. Describe fully a sequence of transformation that have been combined making clear that the order in which the transformation are applied. So the question has a very good weightage of 5 marks so you need to address all the things in properly order manner, right? Now how will you do that? At first we need to observe the trans, um, transformations are occurring in this question. 4. What is 4 represents here? 4 is a vertical uh, transformation here. If we point out the transformations here, so x is about the um, horizontal shift on x-axis, right? 1 upon 2x stretch on the x-axis and 4 is vertical stretch. Alright, so we have 3 transformation of horizontal and vertical both. So I will start with the first one. It's a horizontal horizontal translation and we need to write down the column vector of this translation that will be 30 and 0 so we had done with this part now for 1 upon 2x stretch stretch on x axis with a factor of Two, right if it's 1 upon 2 so on x axis it will be up to positive 2 all right after that for 4 stretch on 
y axis with a factor of 4 all right so that is a combined transformation horizontal and vertical and you need to address things properly with complete details right so you need to highlight the factor the transformation it is on which axis it is all you need is to identify because the question has a very good percentage of 5 marks next one find the exact solution of the equation 4 sine half x minus 30 is equal to 2 root 2 all right so we have 4 sine 1 upon 2 x minus 30 is equals to 2 under root 2 all right if you observe the question so if there we have x and the domain has been modified right so if it was x so the interval is from 0 to 360 but if it is 1 over 2 x minus 30 now what should be the interval here so 1 over 2 x minus 30 that means the starting point is 30 right and the ending point 360 divided by 2 is 180 180 minus 30 it will be 150 that means we need to travel in that interval only so I will start the question by replacing this complete angle by alpha so sine alpha is equals to 2 under root 2 divided by 4 let me find out the angle here uh, 2 under root 2 divided by 4 and inverse of sine it is 45 so you got the angle alpha it's 45 degree right and sine is positive in the first or in the second quadrant so in the first one in the first one it will be theta is equals to 45 and in the second one it will be 180 minus 45 so we got the value for theta it's 45 and 135 for uh, for the positive x axis now we need to find out the value for x and how we can do we can replace that theta by half x minus 30 so instead of uh, theta we have 1 over 2 x minus 30 is equals to 45 and 35 135 sorry we need to equate that angle on both sides so it will be 1 over 2 x minus 30 is equals to 45 and 1 over 2 x minus 30 is equals to 135 solve for x here so 1 over 2 x is equals to 45 plus 30 it's 75 2 needs to be multiplied so x is equals to 150 similarly 1 upon 2 x is equals to 135 plus 30 it's 165 and 165 times 2 it will be 330 so these are the two final values for x here next one the equation of a circle is x square plus y square plus 6x minus 2y minus 26 equals to 0 find the coordinates of the center of the circle and radius and hence find the coordinates of the lowest point all right so first we need to arrange that equation it will be x square plus 6x plus y square minus 2y equal to 26 we need to apply the method for completing a square we need to find out the uh, uh, number divided by 2 to so 6 divided by 2 it will be 3 let me write it down 6 divided by 2 it will be 3 you need to apply a square on 3 9 so we need to add 9 and subtract 9 here similarly for second one it will be minus 2 upon 2 it will be 1 1 is minus 1 minus 1 is square it will be 1 so we need to add 1 and subtract 1 now we need to make identities here all right these two will be identity it will be x plus 3 whole square it will be y minus 1 whole square minus 9 as it is minus 1 as it is equal to 26 so we got x plus 3 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square equals to 26 minus 9 minus 1 it goes on the right side it will be plus 10 so we got x plus 3 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square equals to 36 now we need to address the center point and the radius so center point h comma k here it's minus 3 and 1 and the radius is 6 after that we need to find the lowest point on the circle so for that part let me sketch the circle roughly sketch 
so the center point we have it's minus 1 and 3 so minus 1 and 3 let's suppose this is the point that is a circle center point and the circle will be like this right it's a roughly sketch all right now for the lowest point for the lowest point wait a minute wait a minute let me draw another circle for more clar clarity oh. mm -mm. all right now you need to understand the concept that this is a center point the coordinates are minus 3 comma 1 and the radius is 6 now if i draw a line from center to circumference that will be radius it's 6 unit right so it means that from point 1 from point 1 I am moving 6 units downward right so that will be 1 minus 6 so the lowest point here on the circle it will be minus 3 comma minus 5 that is the lowest point on the circle all right next one find the set of values of the constant k for which the line with the equation this intersect the circle at two distinct points. now the circle equation x plus 3 square it's x plus 3 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square is equals to 36 and the equation of line we have it's y is equals to kx minus 5. We'll substitute the value of y into this equation so it will be x plus 3 whole square plus instead of y it will be kx minus 5 minus 1 whole square equals to 36 it will be x plus 3 whole square plus kx minus 6 whole square equals to 36 i need to expand an identity here it will be a square plus 2ab plus b square it will be a square plus 2ab 2 6 are 12 kx plus b square equal to 36 on both sides 36 and 36 cancels so we have x square plus k square x square plus 6x minus 12k x plus 9 equals to 0 i gathered the likewise terms together i will take common here that will be x square and inside the bracket it will be 1 plus k square similarly i will take x common here inside the bracket it will be 6 minus 12k and plus 9 as it is so i just form the quadratic equation it says that intersects the circle at two distinct points so the condition we have it's b square minus 4ac is greater than 0 right now what is b square b is 6 minus 12k square minus 4a is 1 plus k square and c is 9 greater than 0 expand identity here it will be a square minus 2 6 are 12 12 plus are 144k plus 144k square minus 4 9s are 36 minus 36k square greater than 0 we need to simplify the numbers here so 144 and minus 36 uh, 144 minus 144 minus 36 it's 108 so 108 k square minus 144 k plus 36 minus 36 cancel greater than 0 uh, we can take common here all right so we have the common 108 and k it can be 2 we can take 6 common here so if it's 6 k inside the bracket it will be 108 divided by 6 108 divided by 6 it's 18 so 18k minus 144 divided by 6 it's 24 greater than 0 all right so it will be 6k greater than 0 and 18k minus 24 greater than 0 if i write it individually it will be 6k greater than 0 18k minus 24 greater than 0 you can simplify it little bit so k greater than 24 over 18 all right so six six fours are and six threes are so k greater than four over three and k, k greater than zero now it says find the set of value right so now 
if I roughly construct it, if I roughly construct it, so it's it will be like this, it will be like this, and the values for k it's zero and four upon three. Since the sign is greater than right, we need to go outside the curve. So these will be the values for k. So I can say that it shows that k should be lesser than zero, and k should be greater than four upon three to meet these conditions here. And this part, this this will be the final answer of this question. All right. All right. Question number ten. It says that the equation of the curve is such that d square y over dx square equals to six x square minus four over x cube. The curve has a stationary point at minus one comma nine upon two. Determine the nature at the point minus one and nine upon two. When we need to find out the nature, that means we need to find the second derivative. We already have second derivative. What we need to do? So we need to plug in the value for x in this expression. So we have d square y over d x square is equals to six x square minus four over x cube. Right? Instead of x, we are going to place the value that is minus one. And instead of x, I will use the value minus one. So it will be minus one cube, right? So minus one square is six minus minus plus four. It will be ten. So the value is positive. That means the nature is minimum. All right. In the next part, it says find the equation of the curve. So we have d square y over d x square equals to 6x square minus 4. If we shift x cube in the numerator, that will be minus x power minus cube, right? To find in uh, the value, uh, the equation of curve, we need to integrate that expression for second derivative. And if it will be dy over dx is equals to 6. The integral of x square is x cube upon 3 minus 4. Integral of x minus three to the minus two over minus two and plus c. Now the stationary point at minus one and two, right? So we have the turning point. It's minus one and nine upon two. So the meaning of a stationary point is dy over dx is equals to zero. That means when we place dy over dx is equals to zero, the value for x is minus one. So I will use the value at x is minus one cube. Divided by three, minus minus plus two ones are two twos are four. Two x is minus one square plus c. Simplify, it will be three ones are three twos are. It is minus two plus two plus c equal to zero. So we got the value for c is zero, right? What we are going to do? We need to place that value of c in that equation. So it will be. dy over dx is equals to three ones are three twos are two x cube minus minus plus two x power minus two and c is zero. So that is dy over dx. Now we need to integrate that equation again. All right. So dy over dx integral is y is equals to two x cube integral is x power four over four Plus two x power minus two plus one and minus one over minus one plus d. Since we had already used c here, so we cannot suppose c for the second integration. Now to find out the value of d, we have the value for x and y that is minus one and nine upon two. So y is nine upon two equals to two ones are two twos are. It's one over two x power four minus two. Over x because x power is negative one, so I shift it in the denominator, right? And the value for x we have it's negative one, so negative one, negative one. Simplify it will be nine over two is equals to one over two minus minus plus two plus d. We can simplify, so that will be nine over two minus one over two minus two equals to d. So taking LCM, it will be two nine minus one eight minus two two zar four equals to D, and D is equals to eight minus four four upon two two. Right. Once we have the value of D, we need to place that value in that equation. So it is y is equals to x four divided by two minus two x sorry plus two x to the power minus one plus D and D is what two. 
or we can write in more simplified form x4 divided by 2 plus 2 over x plus 2 and that is the equation of curve. Alright, next one. Show that the curve has no other stationary points. For stationary points, we know that dy over dx is equals to 0, right? So we have the value for dy over dx which we had find previously. It is 2x cubed plus 2x minus 2. That is dy over dx, right? So we need to use that 2x cubed plus 2x power minus 2. 2x cubed plus 2x power minus 2 equal to 0. We need to simplify that equation here. So it will be 2x cubed plus 2 over x square equals to 0 or we can shift it on the right side 2x cube is equals to minus 2 over x square right uh, if we multiply so it will be 2x 3 plus 2 it will be 5 equals to minus 2 keep in mind when bases are same and they are multiplying power needs to be added so now we have 2 and 2 cancel so x power 5 is equals to negative 1 all right so the stationary point we have it's negative 1 which is already given in the question so again we got the same value for x is equals to negative 1 hence prove that the curve has no other stationary point it has only one stationary point that is negative 1 next one a point is moving along the curve and the y coordinate of a is increasing at a rate of 5 units per second now the data we have it's dy over dt it is dy over dt is equals to 5 units per second. Find the rate of increase of the x coordinate. What is the unknown parameter here? It's dx over dt. That is unknown. And the value for a x is 1. Alright. Firstly, I will write out the chain rule here. It will be dy over dt is equals to dy over dx times dx over dt. We have the value for dy over dt and that is equals to 5 as given in the question. We have the value for dy over dx and dy over dx we had find previously and it was this one right dy over dx 2x cube plus 2 over x square. So dy over dx dy over dx is equals to 2x cube plus 2 over x square. We have the value for x is given, it's 1. So at x is equals to 1. So it will be 2 plus 2 that is equals to 4. I'm going to place that value 4 in dy over dx. So 5 equals to 4 times dx over dt. So you got the value for dx over dt is equals to 5 over 4 and that is your final answer. So I hope that all these questions are clear to you and if there is any problem that you are not clear or any questions so you can drop me a message here. I will try my best to uh, reply you as early as possible. See you in the next video. Take care and Allah Hafiz.